This is, this is an older essay written uh, the, the week after the, um, the riots in 1992. And it, I'll, I'll, I'll read it, you can, you can hear. Um, I can't tell you how much I love Los Angeles. It is eight o'clock and the light has started to fade as I sit on the floor of my apartment, staring at the spot where the rain not so much dripped as oozed from the door jam. For the last decade or so, I have lived in a creaking apartment, probably swank in its day, that has been home to a dog trainer, a fiddle player, and a series of writers in a smartly columned building in an aging neighborhood nobody has yet bothered to name. Downstairs, a baby cries out in Spanish. In the distance, the ghetto boys boom from a passing truck. For the fifth time in about an hour, I think about the other parts of town, the ones with croissant shops on the street corners and air-conditioned shopping malls and neighbors who look like me. Before the fires of April, there were 14 different kinds of ethnic restaurants within a five-minute walk. Now, there are just 10. For a while, everything in the neighborhood seemed just a little more ominous. The Saturday night gunshots a little louder, the omnipresent sirens and helicopters a little closer to home. When you spend some time in my neighborhood, you learn the rhythm of the place. The mornings when the Mexican's fruit truck shows up on the corner, the hour when Filipino teenagers snack on liver buns and Coca-Cola at the Pancit shop. The peaceful time in late afternoon when the avenue flows majestically. Guatemalan women walk home from Ralph's with bags of groceries balanced expertly on their heads. Salvadoran construction workers crowd into the local Korean noodle shop for steamed dumplings. In this neighborhood, most of us are just passing through. Transients on our way to more permanent homes in Long Beach or Huntington Park. We are all citizens of the world. We are all strangers, together. But to my Korean landlords, this neighborhood is home. I have been awakened before dawn by the rhythmic thud of their pounding garlic into paste on the back porch. I have stumbled out the door with an armful of wet laundry, only to find all of the clotheslines taken up by drying fish. <laughs> I have also come home from work to find the back stairs spread with leaves of cabbage, curing in the hot sun. Even when their son was shot a half mile south of here, there was no questioning of their sense of place. The landlords keep to themselves, and so do I. I often wish that they would invite me over for dinner.